Probably when I was 16, maybe 15, 16 years old. Um, it, it, yeah, and that's when I first learned how to play the, the harmonica parts to the tune. Hmm. I, I didn't own a harmonica at the time, so but I knew of an elder who had one in the community, and I went to grab his. Uh, I bought it from him, and just to learn all the parts. So I think it took me a week, whatever, to learn it all, the, the harmonica parts. And Self-taught? I, yeah. Like you just picked it up and started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had no harness for it, so I had to make it out of a, a coat hanger, a wire one, and, and two sticks and elastic bands to hold it up while I played. Keep me searching for a heart of gold, and I'm getting on. So um, what was the decision behind putting it in, in the album and, and then having it be the, the first single? It was really an 11th hour decision. We thought, you know, why not take a song, you know, a well-known song, particularly a Canadian, um, from a Canadian artist, and see if we can do something with it, you know, uh, as a band. And auto, right, right away, Heart of Gold is like, why don't we do Heart of Gold and see how that turns out. And we quickly kind of thought about why not making it our own and how we're going to make it our own in, in, in a way. Because it's been covered so many times already. Yeah, sometimes there's pressure when you pick a song that's so iconic like yeah. that, like, like you say, like so many people have done. Yeah. Uh, so we arranged it quickly with the producer uh, and the drummer uh, the day before we recorded it. And the producer said, why don't you, know, why don't you sing a verse in in Cree, you know, that would be awesome. Nobody else has done that out there. That would be very, very unique. And I'm like, hmm, I've never really sang in Cree. Uh, I, I mean, I have done some gospel Cree hymn in, uh, back home. You know, that would be the only thing I've done in, in Cree on the guitar. But never on an album or... Never on an album or anything like that, no. something a little bit different than we've done before and I think I was always on the fence about it the first two albums I didn't really want to bring that stuff into it the music because I was really trying to push for a commercial sound more of a mainstream that's where I wanted to take take my music and I didn't want to be stuck in that whole Aboriginal category I wanted to go beyond that and break through that so that's that's kind of where I was sort of in that mind frame for a long time, frame of mind. Um, and then this album, I started to sort of let go of that and just try things and see what happens. And I, I think it, it turned out really good. So what is it about High Road that you, know, you think is sort of maybe the best Midnight Shine work yet? You, you can definitely tell there's there's um, there's been some growth there um, but for me it, it's it's always been about <clears throat> I think my experiences and I think a lot of artists it's, it's the same uh, they they write about their what they know their cultural influences or or their personal experiences and the environment they they grew up in and of course, uh, a lot of a lot of that for me, and that's where the writing is coming from. And I think there is some probably unresolved stuff in my life that I needed to to find a place for that stuff to to put it, you know, and for it to live and, and to just let it go and get rid of it. I think in terms of what's different uh, with this album, I think that's probably one of the biggest things for me is being able to let go of some of the stuff um, that you know I've experienced and went through. In recent years and, and as uh, throughout the, the, my uh, life growing up in Ottawa, Piscat. And that community is, you know, for most people, if you ask them about it, if they've heard of it, 
they would probably think of the tragedies that have happened there yeah. um, over the last couple of years. Yeah. And, and the, the, the string of suicides uh, in 2016. But that's your community. It's where you live and you come from there. What I wanted to ask you was, what, what should we know about Attawapiskat? You know, that apart from the struggle of, of the community, what, what's there that we should know about? Yeah, apart from the struggles, I mean, people people are really strong and, and resilient, definitely, and they're very, very tolerant of um, things. I think there, there are a lot of good people there, and there are a lot of good stories to be told. And I've always said that, and it's a beautiful place, uh, you know, although the, there's, there are things happening in the community, but if you, if you just go out and, and see some of the, you know, the outskirts of the community, like the land. Um, like I just came up from, from, from my family's traditional land. I was out there for almost three weeks with my family. And before going out, you know, I was, I had lots going on. You know, we have the music thing happening. I have a, a small, I'm also an entrepreneur, so I have um, a couple of businesses that I'm managing uh, aside from all that. So it's so crazy, but when we're out there, uh, you know, all that stuff starts to kind of go away and you start to see more clearly and things start to make sense again. And the other band members are I mean, they're they're from other communities too. And nobody's close to the south. No. Where are they all? All you guys from? Okay, you're out of Wapaska. Yeah. Zach and Stan are from Moose Factory. Stan still lives in Moose Factory, but Zach resides in Sudbury actually. But that poses a lot of challenges too when you're you're trying to launch a career, uh, a music career. How do you guys make that work? How we've always done it is. You know, we got a show coming up and we spend a little bit of time rehearsing before the show and, and then we do the show and that's, a, that's how we've always done it. You know, it gels pretty quickly though. We gel pretty quickly and that, that's always been, it's been that way since the very first show we did, which was when we opened for Trooper in 2011. And we, we rehearsed for a couple of days through my, like my original stuff and a few covers. And I remember doing my original stuff and I remember that moment, one moment I had in that, during that whole rehearsal uh, that, you know, I can remember like it, you know, it's so vividly. I just couldn't stop grinning the whole time when we were bringing my songs to life. And I just like had this, you know, <laughs> funny smile on my face and the guys were, were looking at me like, what's this guy so happy about? <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure they were, uh, you know, a little, uh, feeling a little sketchy about playing with me in the band. But, you know, I, I just felt so good to hear my songs come to life. And, and uh, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't be more happier. I couldn't have been more happier at the time. And then, he just kept going with it from there and here we are today eight years later three albums and i think there's still a lot of music left in, in the guys it's just 